Hey, everyone. And in particular, hey to all you ladies out there. The establishment media are now coming after you. There's already been a few prior precedents and examples of where we're seeing that pivot taking place today. Now, they'll use all kinds of political language and rhetoric to try to suggest that they're only doing it because they care for you. But at the end of the day, you're going to find out just like how they've been treating men for decades upon decades now and trying to micromanage, dictate, and control every aspect of our social and economic lives. Well, hey, authoritarians are authoritarians. And if they see that you're stepping outside the bounds of allowable opinions or actions, yeah, they'll come for you too. So once again, this is actually a perfect example where I think men and women should be coming together while all of us that care about freedoms, personal responsibility, and individual liberty and push back against these central planning hacks that, like I say, are only causing more and more division and not just among the sexes but among the race as well. And it's all done as a guise to divide and conquer. They want to conquer us all. Now, if you're willing to fight against your you, the people that you might perceive as your enemies, just regular average people, men, women, black, white, brown, Islam, Christian, you, you, LGBTQ, whatever, straight. Listen, just understand they use the divide and conquer routine because it works. And, and, and if you're allowing them to propagate that division, then, then you're literally giving them the power to dictate and control not just your life, but the lives of millions of other people. This is where we have to come together and show solidarity with each other. Even Hey, I don't have to agree with everything that you want to uh, put forth and present as personal preferences, nor should you have to agree with the way I want to live and the things I want to do. It always, always should come down to very fundamental, basic principles and rules. I don't get to use force, violence, coercion, or theft, right, against people that don't want to align with the kind of things that I promote or espouse or do, and neither do they. So it's that live, let live mentality. That's ultimately, if we can finally get to that point, instead of allowing these central planning hacks, these authoritarians to use the divide and conquer routine, if we can come together and just say, listen, you, you do you and I'll do me. Well, you just don't get to force your crap on me. I won't force my crap on you. And we can have that live, let live mentality and just have some very fundamental ground rules and principles. If we can do that, then these central ha planning hacks they have no power. They have no ability. They have no capacity to micromanage our lives. But if you're unwilling to stand up and defend even people that you don't agree with, well, they'll always win. These central planners, these authoritarians, these hacks will always win at all of your expense. CBC News politics, of course. We're ignoring Canada's alcohol problem, Chief Public Health Officer warns. Recent numbers show alcohol abuse among women is on the rise. This is by Catherine Tune, CBC News, November 3rd, 2018. Canada's chief public health officer says she's worried about the rise in having drinking among Canadian women. In recent weeks, Dr. Theresa Tam has tried to sound the alarm on Canadians' problem with substance abuse, making it the focus of her 2018 report on the state of public health in Canada, a snapshot of this country's health. Let me just say first and foremost, most people, as we all acknowledge, if we're honest with ourselves or with each other, people use these things as a vice or a form of escapism. And when you're seeing that being increased or rising, doesn't matter which demographic, which sex, which race, which particular demographic that you see that happening for, that is always the consequence and the effect. They're very closely aligned, folks. So once again, if people or women in particular now are turning more and more to the bottle, or I would say wine predominantly for, for women, it's because of the political and social economic culture in this country. It's escapism. 101. Now, of course, it was men throughout most of history that were pointing, oh, you're bad for doing these things. But now I guess they're turning and pivot toward because they're seeing that now women that are, are, are now economically and socially and safe because they've been, you know, how many generations now have been forced into the, that's the thing. You ladies, what? Well, you wanted to get into the workforce, did you? Well, well, now you're, you're having to deal with the stuff that men have had to deal with for many, 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 many decades and centuries prior. 
And now women are, are probably going to be more aligned with men too and having to, you got to find some form of escapism. That's just, that's, that's a human trait. That's not a man or a woman trait. That's when you have a lot of authoritarianism, a lot of central planning, and a large amount of dictatorial edicts that control every aspect of your social and economic lives. Of course, you're going to find some way to break free from that, even if it's just for a short time frame. Even if you recognize that it might not be personally conducive to your long-term health or those kind of benefits. While the report touches on the deadly opioid crisis and health concerns linked to legal recreational marijuana, Tam said alcohol abuse also deserves the nation's attention. First of all, Canada has no poppy fields or any way that we can gain access to these opioids other than through government or central planners or these crony corporations that bring them in this country, which let me just tell you in case you aren't aware of this, 90% of the world's opiates are produced in Afghanistan. Why do you think these countries, U.S., Canada, a lot of these allies wanted to go into that country? It's to protect big pharmaceutical companies. It's to protect that gigantic industry that now is, has been shown to be clearly a cause for a lot of hardships for many, many Canadians. Now, I'm not going to blame it on the particular substance because, once again, it's, it's an inanimate object. It has no influence over you. But what it comes down to is you have a large amount of doctors in this country that are more than willing to write a prescription for these legal opioids, right? And when these prescriptions are so easily written and so many people can't have access to them, well, once again, just like with any drug, whether it's legal or illegal, guess what? Some people will fill those prescriptions and then sell them to other people, which is basically what you see happening, which is why this opioid crisis is what it is today. And that all happens under legal practices or government or doctors or prescriptions or pharmacies. That all happens under what should be the area where it prevents people from doing these things because it's, it's all done under government. But as we're seeing, no, government has no pretense of preventing bad things from happening, no matter how much they try to put forth or present in an area that would suggest that they can't. But to now, even after, like I say, causing so much hardship for so many people in Canada, as a result of this legal drug trade, now they're trying to pivot to alcohol. Well, I guess, I guess some of us men out here should be a little bit, I guess, relieved that we're not the brunt of the attack because we've had to suffer that consequence for far too long. But, you know, as a Canadian man, I'm going to stand up for my female counterparts. I was hoping that they would have done the same for me in the past, but rather than be resentful for the fact that a lot of them didn't, I'm going to forget about that, and I'm going to stand up in, in, de in defense of these ladies today. You have a right to consume whatever you want to consume. No one has any pretense of authority to tell you what you can put in your body. Just like you stand up for your rights, right, your abortion rights, well, you should be standing up, hey, I have the right to drink what I want to drink, and why don't I drink myself into stupor? That's none of your goddamn business. And I would be right there to agree with you, and I would stand in defense of your stance on the issue. We have lost sight of the fact that continued high rates of problematic alcohol consumption are leading to a wide range of harm, she writes. A deeper dive into the numbers shows a troubling trend for Canadian women. They're dying from alcohol abuse at a faster rate than men. No, what it comes down to is it's not the, vice, the particular vice of choice that people are using, so whether it's opioids, prescription drugs, alcohol, marijuana, or any other form of escapism. That is not the problem. The problem is the overarching culture that is forcing a larger and larger portion of the population, men and women both, to have to seek out some form of escapism. No, freedom, 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 freedom. That is what is needed. That is the prescription that is definitely necessary to negate or alleviate people from having to go to these forms of escapism. If you give people their ability to be free from forced subjugation, slavery, and indentured servitude, then they will become much healthier in their mental, psychological, and physical state. That's what it ultimately comes down to. Not trying to constantly... This, this is the one thing, I, like I say, this is the part everyone needs to understand. This is the most fundamental aspect of, of why I deal with these kinds of stories on a continuing and ongoing basis. It's not about particular vices. It's not about men, women, white, black, LGBTQ, or straight. No. 
It's people need to feel free. The most well-adjusted people on the planet are the ones that feel the most free. If they feel suppressed, oppressed, or denied their ability to, to live freely in their life, you know, when they're not causing harm to other people, that kind of freedom. Not the freedom to go impose themselves on others or to steal from others or to do harm to others. No, just to live freely in their lives. If you give them freedom, they will become much better people, more well-adjusted, much more moral and ethical in both their habits and behaviors. That is a reality. It's a Canadian libertarian, and I love liberty.